Hello. Hey, what's going on, bro? Yo, what's up, Trey? How are you doing? Doing good, man. How about you? Doing all right myself. <laughs> good stuff, dude. Good stuff. Yeah. Sweet. So you got an agenda prepared, or are we just sort of going off the cuff here? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, dude. I forgot to send too. Sweet. Yeah, send that my way, man. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I've just been doing some apartment shopping, man. Looking at oh, the- really? Mm-hmm. Damn, that's what's up. It's what crazy. are you looking at? Uh, I can show you if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, sure, man. Check this out. So there's a couple I've been looking at, but I'd like to move into a nicer place. So this is like one that I'm looking at currently. Nice. That does look pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah. You got a nice, you got a nice up top balcony. It's called the Alexander downtown. I'd, I'd be Ooh. like, yeah. That's, that's my middle name. <laughs> Alexander? No way, dude. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That's my name. Cool, cool. Nice. And I also found this other spot. And here's here's the thing, man. We all know everything's negotiable, you know? It's like yeah. I found this other spot. It's on Airbnb, but it's not an actual apartment. But, bro, like, I would so live in this. Look at this. Isn't that cool? So I've been- it's like a nice little somewhat like, second floor. It's like a little loft, man. It's, like, so cozy. It's like, dude, I'd totally live there. So, yeah. And where where is all this again? Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Indianapolis. Yeah, okay. Not too far away from home. Um, I prefer to, you know, not cut any ties. I've got a really good life going on over here. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah, man. All right. I sent it. Let's get into this. Okay, you said you have a WhatsApp problem? Yeah, WhatsApp. Okay. Is there a better way of sending it to? No, that's that's perfect, honestly. Okay. Okay. Begin the process of contacting clients. We create an onboarding process for clients. Uh, creating a video. Watch explaining every client I get. Do you meet such call with clients only one time? Getting a contract before or after. What type of videos to use? Remote businesses. Uh, okay. Cool. Good stuff, man. A lot of it's mainly about clients, as you can tell. Yeah, a lot of just the technical stuff with clients. Exactly. So, That's what I want to get into today. Well, yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. Well, so. Let, let me just get a notebook real fast. I want to. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Ready. So I've shown you this, right? Uh, I've shown you this. Yeah, you showed it to me once. Yeah. This, I mean, I'm not even kidding. This is like a six-figure business. Right? Okay. So if you're getting the right people on the door, you're getting the right people on the phone. I mean, it's super, super easy. It's really, it's dead easy. The only hard part is building authority. That's where you actually have to put in the work. You actually have to be an authority figure. You can't just kind of fake it so it takes actually your niche it takes being good at what you do and that takes time but once you're good at what you do once you have a little authority it's just the easiest route to go and it's a it's definitely a curve at the start but once you get over that curve it's it's too easy um so beginning the process of contacting clients so the reason why i answered with this you know this here is because i don't do a lot of the cold outreach uh, cold outreach is fine at the start, um, and you can do it, but honestly, this is just so much easier. Getting people to come to you is so much, it's it's way more controllable, okay? And now, I'll be honest, it's easier for me because I have more social proof, I have more case studies, and I have more results that I can share, okay? And so, it's slow at the start, but I would prefer that a student get really good at inbound at the start than, than that they get really good at outbound because like, yeah, outbound is just, there's such a cap to it. Uh, the only reason I would do outbound is if I find somebody who's like a perfect fit for me and I really want to work with them. That's the only time I would do outbound. Besides that the way you work, right? Like the, sorry. That like meets the way you work with them that they, yeah. By exactly. perfect. You mean like, by perfect, I mean like they're in a great position for me to help them and they'd be a great case study for me and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So. And that 
how would you determine that? Is that simply just based on you, maybe how experienced you are with doing all this compared yeah. to like, how would I determine how, like yeah, the perfect so I would just determine it. I would just determine it by looking at things that might tell me their revenue, you know, looking at things that might tell me how successful they are. Um, you know, any sign that like, any sign that says they're in a good spot for me to come in and do something for them. Like, and there's a lot, but like with e-commerce, for example, if you're doing Facebook ads for e-commerce, checking their Facebook page, seeing the ads that they run, if they're not running ads or if they're running bad ads and that shows you you've got room to work, if they don't have a pixel on their site. It means you've got room to work. If they've got a, like, you know, 50,000 Facebook likes and 200,000 followers on Instagram and you've got a lot of influencers wearing their stuff and stuff and they're not running ads, it's like, you know, that's like a really good client, you know? Yeah. Okay. It's like, you know, just looking for things that point towards, you know, them potentially being a good fit for your services. Uh, and then for me, like, you know, with the coaching angle or like the course uh, angle, like I look for like a big audience. They need to have a large established audience um, and they need to have some high ticket offers. If not, they need to have the potential to develop some high ticket offers. I'm actually working on this right now with a guy that I connected with locally. He's actually one of like the top 100 rated internet marketing podcast people it's pretty neat we had a great connection yeah. he's got a massive audience he's got like 150,000 monthly listeners on his podcast and all he sells right now is like a cheap monthly mastermind and he doesn't make that much money i'm like bro like we need to get you we need to get a high ticket course and then a higher ticket coaching program and i'll build out the funnels and everything for you and we can add like 50 to 60 thousand dollars like Man, that's gonna help him. yeah yeah so like i'm like Crazy. That, you know what I'm saying? So when I find it's, it's, it's about finding gaps. I think the key word is gaps. Like they've got everything, but this gap is missing. And if we could find missing. Gap, yep. Yep. And so that's, okay. that's, and so then there's, 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 there's growth gaps, which are like, you know, it grows the whole business. And then there's, and then there's like equity gaps, which like, like, for example, retargeting ads off of a e-commerce website is like, you know, it's like equity. It adds more to what's already there versus growth would be like going cold and bringing in more traffic. Mm, so, like starting the whole process. Yeah. Which is like maintaining it and exactly. expanding on it. So, yeah. You, cause, cause our job as an internet marketer is to, is to create and then fuel the customer journey for our clients, right. Or edit the customer journey that already exists. And so if you're, if you're bringing more people into the customer journey, that's, that's growth. If you are making the customer journey more profitable that's equity right and so with this client that i talked about where he's already got the audience he's already got the eyes i just need to help him build out better back-end offers that's equity I'm that's the equity part of it. okay that makes sense yep that makes sense. yep okay. and so how, how would you determine like what are some things that you like that would stand out on a client that you wouldn't want to work with like whether that's like obviously like revenue if they don't if they're not making enough then you wouldn't um, yeah revenue um, yeah, revenue is obviously the biggest thing. Um, but next to that would be like improper beliefs. I don't want to have to change their beliefs as to how all this works. I kind of want them to already see the value, you know, and that's again, okay. what inbound because outbound people are like, Oh, we already spent $10,000 on Facebook ads. It didn't work. We'd rather not try Like, you know, but little do you know, they ran one campaign with one ad set with one ad and the targeting was bad. And the ad was just a picture of the product on a white <laughs> background with like 50% yeah. off today, buy now. And that was their entire campaign. They spent $10,000 doing that and they wondered why it didn't work, you know? So like, I'd rather yeah. it be somebody who generally understands the value of this stuff, but doesn't have the time or the resources to do it themselves. Okay. You know? And then that's why you would prefer to start with the whole at the Facebook group to Facebook friends thing. That's why I prefer inbound is because in order for any, anybody to follow a message down to its source, they have to see the value of the message. Like you with me with coaching, like you saw the YouTube, you liked the message, you came to the source. Now you've invested in coaching. Same exactly. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing. Okay. So All right. That makes sense. Um, so when, when doing that, I guess, do you have a, it's kind of answering one the second to last question, but do you have a video that explains everything to uh, them to then make sure you want to contact them? At the moment, no. Um, and I work with few enough clients at this point that it's okay that I do that. I, I have, I'm kind of in a transition point in my agency. My agency is as small as it's ever been, you know, uh, but I'm trying to move away from 
a couple low tickets, like, like three high ticket, like five to ten thousand dollar a month clients. Like that's what I want. Okay. okay. Uh, and so yeah, like, that would um, be better. Yeah. yeah. And it's way more fun, way better. And, um, you know, I've got like, the, I've got the three in mind. I know who I'm going to be working with. And I'm developing those relationships, you know? Um, yeah. And so like, I think that would be helpful if you have like a lot of, a lot of mass moving through your business. But honestly, an onboarding call is so much more valuable, so much easier for you at this stage. I would just do that. Okay. I would just have onboarding calls and all you need to do on an onboarding call, bro, is tell them to prepare any questions that they have. And then you need to prepare a list of everything that you need from them in order to operate with them. Right. And then that's all you need. And then at, at which point you guys are ready to rock as long as they can get you all the things that you need. Um, and then and that's, that's the onboarding call structure. Super, super simple. And things like uh, getting them like a Facebook page to do Facebook ads and all that, that happens in that call or would you plan to do that at a different time? Um, yeah, we would try and do that on that call. Um, and okay. what I would prefer to do is that I send them instructions before the call to get them set up with everything that they need so that we can do it on the call, you know? Mm, okay. Yeah. But the goal, basically the goal is that by the end of that call, you've got 95% of what you need and they've got 95% of what they need. And there's a 5% margin there where you can just handle it over Slack or whatever else, you know? And just preparing for that would ensure that you get that 95% of what you need, right? Exactly. Preparing exactly. for the car. Otherwise, and all that. otherwise you're going to be going back and forth with your client all day. Constantly. Yeah, it's going to be annoying and then they're going to get annoyed. And then, yeah. yeah. And, and nobody wants that, you know, uh, they don't want to have to talk to you that much, you know, like not that they don't want to hear about how it's going, but like if they can get results and not have to talk to you, that's amazing for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something good to explain to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. And um, you don't you don't have them like sign anything or any like important important papers to, you know, or documents maybe. Like I remember, like I'm asking because when I was doing the Ty Lopez one, he would have all these documents that you would essentially give to the the client and they would sign and then you know to, just to keep everything on in order and truck. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you do anything like that or not. Um, I have a, I have a base um, contract template that I can send you just for general consulting services. Like you could use it for anything. You can use it for any done with you, done for you consulting, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so I can send you that. But besides that, I don't, I don't do a lot of legal documents just cause it's like, you know, I, it's, I generally have a pretty good relationship with the people I work with, you know? Yeah. It's not like you need to worry about anything like that. Right? No, I mean, the only reason you need a contract is so that if you go to court, you can reference the contract in court about what was said would be done, you know? And so like, you know, very rarely are you going to get taken to court over something at, at this scale, you know, yeah. but okay. if it comforts the client and it makes them feel like it's a more professional decision then yeah, I do it. Cause it's kind of all up to the client. Most of my clients don't care either. But of course I run with a different breed. I'm like other internet marketers are my clients, you know, so they're kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking like what exactly type of clients am I trying to get? You know what I mean? Cause I know at first when I was going, when I was coming into this, I was just thinking strictly like, like I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think at all like online type of businesses. You know what I mean? I was thinking more mm -hmm. like brick and mortar local type of things. But after like what you've been explaining to me and all that, it seems way better to do online. Yeah. It, it, online businesses. I would say. Generally. So then, so then how would I, would I start with that? You know what I mean? I don't, how would I begin with well, an online client or what would you suggest I do? I mean, I think you're asking, you know, the wrong question. It's not, it's not that you start with it. It's, I mean, it, in that business is the same as a physical business. A physical business just has a location, you know, it's like they're still selling services and products. And they still need help selling the services and products on social media. You know, I see local as a bottleneck, an unnecessary bottleneck. I don't see it as more opportunity. I see it as far less because with the internet, you know, the entire internet is your marketplace. As opposed to local, you've got maybe 40 to 50 businesses that you could work with and only two or three are actually going to care. And, you know, 
So that's the it's just true. It's very yeah. true. So it's the same thing. Okay. There's no difference, really. It's at the end of the day, you're dealing with people. Okay. And if you think about it that way, then all the strategies are the same. You know, it's all the same. So like with a physical business, if you're to walk into the door and ask them to talk to their manager or whatever, and, or whatever, or, or you, you'd have to get them to, I, I talked about in my video recently, how, my video called Stop Cold Calling, How to Sell Anything Online. I don't know if you watched it, but I basically talked about how there's this hump that you got to get people over. It's like the trust hump. If they're over the trust yeah, hump. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually did see that one. Yeah. That's all it is. And so you got to bring value, help them, um, and, or, or, or show other results or prove yourself somehow with content or by whatever means. It's the reason people have resumes. Resumes are a form of that trust hump. You know, when you're applying for a job, they need to trust you. And that's why you also have referrals that they can talk to on the phone and talk about you with. And that's getting you over the trust hump. So all human psychology is, you know, if you want somebody to invest in you, you got to get them over that hump. And so whether they're an internet business, whether they are a physical business, the goal is to get them over that hump. And the easiest way to do that is by speaking to the problems that they have that already exist, bringing value to them, or uh, showing other results that you've driven that they want for themselves, you know? Um, and so that's why, in my opinion, going with internet businesses is more scalable, more easy, and it's a more long-term move too. And you make a lot more money doing it. And there's a lot more businesses that are willing to pay four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 a month versus, you know, the local that are like 500 to maybe 1200 a month if you're lucky, you know? Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's very true. That's yeah. true as well. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that pretty much sold me on the whole what I'm going to target then. Because <laughs> yeah. Well, I see people overcomplicate it. They're like, how do I move from physical to online? I'm like, it's the same thing. It's people. It's, it, there's, no, <laughs> it's just, yeah. there's no real difference. You know, it's just, it's and if anything, like you said, having a, a brick and mortar or local business is worse because you're stuck to your, the local people, you know what I mean? Or whoever passes by. Yep, yep, 100%. Not to the whole world. A hundred percent. Yeah. And the internet, man, uh, I, there's this rabbi that I follow very closely. And I'm actually getting coffee with him soon. His name's Daniel Lappin. And I think I've told you. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you cut off like for a minute. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, there's this rabbi that I listen to. He's got a podcast and a bunch of books. Okay. Daniel Lappin. I think I've told you about him, but he talks about how the internet is like in his eyes, like he firmly believes that the internet is like God's gift to man, like for, for business, for relationships. He's like, this is like the best thing that has ever happened to mankind. And for me, it's like the, the fewer bottlenecks I can have, especially as a beginner entrepreneur, the better. And the internet is like, it's changed everything forever. Like if, if business is two people coming together and trading and you know, the internet connects all people to all people who have the internet, then we are now sitting on the greatest asset of mankind. Yeah. We're all just connected. Yeah, we're all just connected. So all you got to do, because now it's just a game of getting people over that trust hump. Just get get as many people over that trust hump as possible. You know, that's what my personal brand is. That's what, you know, running ads to like a webinar where you can explain your story and pitch them on something is. That's that you're getting them over that trust hump and you're pitching them. You know, it's it's okay. all, all it is, you know. And how, how would you, how, how would I, I, how would I, I guess, build my confidence in, in being able to, to talk to these business owners and actually are knowing what I'm, what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So at first you can lean your confidence on the fact that this is a great opportunity for a new business. And even if you know nothing and you're super bad at it, mm-hmm. like it's still far better than not doing it for a business, like by like a factor of like five, you know, it's like, even if you suck at Facebook advertising and suck at social media, like just to have it set up for a business is huge, you know? Um, okay. So I would take some of the weight off of you and put some of that weight onto the platform and the fact that, you know, billions of dollars of research has gone into the tools that you're using and that Facebook ads is, you know, tens of millions of dollars are spent daily, hundreds of millions of dollars spent daily on Facebook advertisements profitably, profitably, you know, consistently. Um, And so, you know, you can take some of the, weight off of yourself and put it onto the platform for now and eventually you'll begin to adopt some of that confidence because you'll realize just how easy this is you know okay and that's that's really to me one of the big one of the big hurdles that i had to get over was recognizing like yes it is sort of complex there's a lot of buttons you can click and there's a lot of different options and stuff and like but at the end of the day 
what are we doing? We're putting a message in front of a person to get them to interact with our customer journey. That's all we're doing. And now, now we can send that message to as many people as we want at a time. Of course, there's a price tag on that. But if we have the right offers on the back end, that will always be profitable, you know? Uh, and I recently looked at one of my campaigns for my business, my coaching business. And I've spent $7,000 to make back $38,000 just with coaching. And so it's like, and I wasn't even really trying that hard on that campaign. I just realized all of a sudden that I'd done that. And I was just looking at my numbers. And so like you can build a million dollar business with a 1.2 X ROI. Nonetheless, a freaking 4.5, whatever that is, you know, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's just wild how much the, op the opportunity is. It's just crazy. So if you lean some of your confidence on that, that'll really help you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like maybe the more, the more calls I do, the more meetings I get, it'll just naturally come to me. You know? Yeah, it will. It, it will. And, and I think too, there's no reason for you to at first pretend to be something you're not like, you're not starting off. Like, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they feel like they need to pose in order to get business. You don't like honestly fake it till you make it. Yeah. Fake it till you make it sort of thing. And I did that and it didn't work for me. Then I, cause then I wasn't able to be honest, you know? Um, and like, yeah. So with where you're at, what I would do is I would just, you know, you're going to get smaller retainers. You're going to get less trust, whatever, but just start playing. Just, right? Yeah. Start. I want to begin that snowball. To begin the it momentum. Snowball. And it'll, it will only take two or three months of you playing for you to become like a, somebody worth paying four or $5,000 a month to, if you find the right client, like honestly. And that's something that people don't understand. They don't, they don't grasp how much opportunity you're giving to a business. If you really understand this, nonetheless, bro, if you get a good contractor, who's, who's gotten results consistently for a while, you know? And yeah. Then, that's, that's another thing I really want to talk about the whole contractor thing. Yeah. That's huge, man. If you can get a contractor in place and, and, and that's the amazing thing about a contractor too, is once you get a contractor, you can leverage their results. So like, you can be like, all right, you know, our team has done this, you know, you post that into a Facebook group, say, ask us any questions, you know, and you're just going to get a bunch of messages, a bunch of questions, a bunch of comments, a bunch of friend requests, all potential, all potential clients, you know, all of them. Yeah. Um, and at which point, you know, um, you know, that's, I guess that what I'm trying to say is that's why having a contract is so helpful at the start is because it gives you that authority and it also gives you a little bit of like, um, something to sort of lean your trust on once again, you know, you lean your trust on Facebook algorithm and, and Facebook and internet marketing as a whole and the opportunity that comes with the internet existing. But then you can also lean your, your, your um, trust on your contractor and um, you know, have them do the daily back and forth with your clients for you, you know, pay them 30% of your retainer or, you know, I, I, I will never pay them less than $400 a month. It's either thirty percent of the retainer or four hundred dollars, whichever one is the most. You know, that's kind of like how I play with it right now. That's generally, okay. um, and so that's per client too, right? Um, and so then they're doing the back and forth with the client too. They're answering all the technical questions and they're helping you brainstorm what you need in order to serve the client. So like, you know, like that's what I teach in my course too. Is like, you are not the problem solver you're connecting the problem with the solution. You know, that's what all should do. You yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah. And most of the contractors that you find was on that website you showed me, the online jobs, online. Online jobs at PH. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. Prices recently. It's, it's fairly expensive at this point. So what I would do honestly is um, play with some Facebook groups posting in there. I would maybe even some LinkedIn groups, um, try Upwork, try Fiverr, try, I mean, you're going to find some good people all, all over the place. I've always really liked online jobs just because they've got a great reputation and I've never made a bad hire from them. Okay. And how, how many people have you gone through before? So you got the one that you liked? You saying how many contractors have I had? Yeah. I've gone through a lot at this point. Um, a lot? More than seven. More than seven? Yeah, seven or eight, maybe like max 10. I honestly not keeping count. I also use them for a lot of various things too. I mean, you know, 
call them contractors, call them virtual assistants, whatever you got, different people call them different things. But like I have a virtual assistant right now that takes all the coaching calls and like, oh, me. sorry, and moves them from the Zoom recording cloud to a drive for my students. So you can have these people do, you know, anything you need to do. Yeah, anything you want, yeah. yeah. Anything you need. And I pay that guy like, you know, like $50 a month or something. And he adds like tens of thousands of dollars of value to my course. So it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Yeah. Let's see, you know, finding creative ways to get them to get them to increase the profitability of your business really um okay yeah yeah when it comes to the whole um like talking with clients and meetings would you suggest like come like making like a script or like a guide that would like help me you know how to take the the meeting like under control yeah so all i do all i do on meetings is you know, and I'll give you the whole structure right now. It's really simple, especially when they're inbound. You can do this, okay? Part one, build rapport, make a joke, be silly, you know, break the ice, ask them how their day is going, compliment them if they got big biceps, whatever. You know, just like something something light, something easy, get the conversation going. Um, and then pretty quickly, within, you know, within 30 seconds to a minute, you know, I like to say, all right, so I just want to thank you for scheduling a call just so you know how these calls work. You know, um, I'm just going to be asking you some questions about your business here and where you're at and where you'd like to be. Um, and then showing you some stuff for free as well and really helping you out on this call so you get something out of it. Um, and if I feel like you're in a good position, I'm going to make you an offer at the end of the call. Uh, but, you know, most people aren't in that great of a position to work with me. So if you're not, you'll get a recording of this call and you can take what I teach you home, you know? Uh, and so that's typically how I start. And from there, I do what I said. I start asking them questions. And as they're revealing things about their business, I just pull up my screen and I show them things that are relevant to them um, or things that I know would help them or books that they should read or, you know, anything like that, anything on the call, basically. And I'm just qualifying them. And again, once you get them over that trust hump, that, that, that hump that they, like, you know, once they trust you, then you can qualify them, you know? And so this doesn't really work for cold outreach when you are reaching out to them. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah. it, it, I can yeah. see how that would not work. With no, them. it wouldn't work. And people have tried it when you do cold, cause it's like, you reach out to them, then you're like, hey, thanks for making the time to schedule with me. I'm gonna ask you some questions. It's like, no, you gotta give <laughs> you gotta you're like, What the hell, like, who are you to tell me? Yeah, right? who are you to, exactly. So, and I've seen people do that and I had, I had a student actually do that and then send me the recording of the call and he's like, why didn't this work? I'm like, bro. <laughs> that call was probably really cringy. I would imagine. It, was, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah. And I was like, man. And then, and then the guy <laughs> that made the line was like, uh, you contacted me, man. I'm not sure what you're saying. <laughs> like that's literally <laughs> what he said at one point. So, I remember one time I actually gave a meeting to my dentist and at the time, I was, I really had no idea what I was doing. Like, I didn't, I didn't know much about social media at all. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew the basics of, of how to use everything, but not advertising or anything like that. And he, he gave me such a weird look when I told him the prices and all that and what I'm going to offer him. Like, you know, I'm going to come by, I'm going to take a whole bunch of pictures. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know what? Thank you for coming. Have a nice day. And yeah. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah. Yeah. Or to brush your teeth. <laughs> and then that's it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't forget the floss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sure, man. Well, it, it is just it. it is just a matter of getting them over that trust hump and then qualifying them. Um and so, you know, there's there's a million ways you can go about getting them over the trust. Hump. It could be content, it could be a meeting with them where you bring them value say if you'd like to get another meeting with me soon, you know, whatever it could be, it could be anything. It could be I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of agency owners, you know, they, they run Facebook ads to, you know, a webinar and then they get people to apply to work with their agency from there. And on the webinar, they're just showing case studies and results and telling their story. And, um, and then, you know, like there's, there's a video sales letter that I I'm working on right now to sell my services where I'm just gonna be running ads and, you know, I already have one, but it's, it's, it's not predictable, but I was spending like $1,200 to acquire a client because I would spend money on ads to get them to opt in to watch this little video. 
Um, and it's just a click funnel set up a little video where I explain my story, explain other results I've gotten and, and then, you know, educate them a little bit and then invite them to a call. And then, you know, I'd close one out of four of those calls on services. And so I'd spend $300 per call, about $1,200 per sale. And, you know, it's like, like, you know, I'm building systems to get people over that hump, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's how you really scale is when you can find a good way to get people over the hump and then build on it and make it more predictable. So cold outreach can do that. If you have a lot of leverage and you've got a lot of authority and you're also offering something kind of irresistible, like if you're going to do cold, it's not going to be, Hey, let's get a meeting. It's going to be, Hey, you know, we've been able to do this. Here's an amazing result we've been able to get. And you know, we don't, we don't reach out to that many businesses. We've only reached out to you in the past week or so. Here's proof somehow, you know, um, we want to invite you. We're not going to sell you anything. There's no pressure to work with us of any kind. We want to do a free hour long training with you. You can include your CMO, your CFO, and anybody that you think needs to be on the call. And we're just going to educate you guys and show you how we work, what we do. And, um, you know, if worst case scenario, you don't get a lot out of this call, we'll pay you. Like, you know, it's going to be like a super like leveraged and almost irresistible offer, you know, like, why wouldn't they get on the call sort of a thing? You know, you'll get a recording of the call. If you didn't get value out of it, we'll literally pay you, you know? Um, and so at which point you just chalk in the value, prepare a presentation of some kind, you help them out, you know, their business model, you know what they need and you bring it to them. And then, you know, you're going to get them over that trust on that way. And then you can go into a close later. You can have them have another meeting with you later if they wanted it. And then you can be like, well, you know, uh, here's our prices. Here's how we work. If you want to work with us, we can get started, you know? Um, and that's, that's, that's how I've seen cold work is by, you know, knowing your place, knowing that you have no authority with them and knowing that you have to really kind of be scrappy about how you get them on the phone and then just, you know, building a ton of authority really quickly once you do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The uh, oh yeah, the the contractor is that something you get before getting clients, or you get the clients, worry about the clients, and then figure out how you're gonna. Yeah, I like to get my contractor before. I think okay. it's probably better for a student too, like or like a beginner. It's like mm -hmm. like you know, it's probably more helpful for you to just get the client or get the contractor now, because then you have that bit of like safety net. It's like that person. Okay security you know like helps you a lot just to have someone is it like one one contractor does most of your client work or is it like one contractor per client or one tractor does one tractor one contractor does <laughs> a lot of the work for a lot of clients yeah and then okay. you know i'll just randomly outsource little things here and there but again you know it's it's breaking the mindset that you have to deliver you don't you know anybody can deliver and once you really internalize that then it gets really easy because then it's just about finding the right people. And, you know, we have the internet, which helps us find people really easily. So it's fairly, it's, it's you know, I hate to oversimplify, you know, and make it seem unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> but it really is fairly simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. I bet I'm just checking out the website, online jobs. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so when when you get a client and then like the the products and services that, that they're going to sell or that they want to sell, mm -hmm. um, for the most part, they would already have content to promote the product or would you have to like... How would you deal with that? Getting content, getting a video and all that to promote. So typically, I mean, if they have something, I'll look at it. If it's good, we'll use it. If they have something that's not good, then we'll make something new with them. Um, if they don't have anything, we'll make something with them or for them. Um, and it really depends on the client. It's very client to client. So like, I'll give you an example of a student right now who works with orthodontists. I mean, he 
figured out this one ad copy that works really well for orthodontists and it includes a blow up flamingo weirdly enough and so he's been having to buy blow up flamingos for every single one of his clients and tell them to take a picture in it because it's like it's catchy you know and like it works really well they're getting like really cheap leads and they buy and it's like you know so it's kind of a it's kind of a two-way thing. Like, you know what works and you kind of instruct the client on how to get to what works and how to achieve it. Okay. Uh, you know. Like, you got to be a little creative on it. Getting a little, he, he definitely gets a little creative for sure. Um, and it works, so nothing wrong with it. Um, and so, you know, I think the game is figuring out what works, you know, and then once you know what works, then knowing how to instruct your clients to get it. It's like, I know that sounds way too simple, but like, like if it's a video, you know, you give them examples of other videos that have worked. And so like, I generally know that like content for my clients, the best thing that we can do is under produced, super simple iPhone videos, you know, or with a lot of e-commerce clients, it's the same thing as well. You know, the higher the production value, the lower opportunity it has to actually work well on Facebook like is what I've learned. And so like, you know, I'll show them examples of that. Um, and then I'll write up a list of like five videos that, that I need from them, you know, and then I'll send it their way. You think you can get it back to me. So yeah. And I always like to attach deadlines on these things too. So that's the thing too, is when you're working with your clients, like make sure that they know that this video has to be done by this time or something, you know, okay. even if you have to share with them. To ensure everything's moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. I think I slept weird last night. My neck's feeling weird. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I've had it where I wake up and I literally can't move my head at all. Like, my neck is just stuck. That's, that's wow. a terrible feeling. <laughs> Um, so for pretty much from here on out, the last question is what should I be doing like on a daily basis or pretty much when I'm not working at my, at the restaurant mm -hmm. to ensure, or how can I be working effectively every single day to make sure I'm always, you know, was that call, calling, always calling clients or always, you know, yeah. um, systemizing everything or. Yeah. Well, hmm. So the other thing to move the needle, you know, in any business is, you know, getting good at selling your service and getting good at getting results, you know? Um, and so, you know, it's kind of the question of what are you selling? How are you selling it? You know, what are you selling? It's like, what is the service? Are you good at it? How good are you at it? How do you do it? And how are you selling it? What's your method of getting people in? Uh, you know, what's your method of bringing value to them, et cetera. Like, you know, so once you establish those things, then, you know, or what, once you know what questions to ask, then progress becomes easy, you know? So I, I'm slow to give people a daily game plan because everybody's life is so different. But I do think that if you can focus on the two elements of what am I selling, you know, getting good at your service, understanding your service, doing research on it, getting a contractor, anything that pertains to getting better results for clients once they pay. And then how are you selling it, which is anything that pertains to getting more clients, you know? Um, and so what I like to do is set set aside, you know, at your stage, I would set aside three to four hours a day if you can. Mm -hmm. and do research and come up with your own game plan based on what works for you, you know? Um, the only game plan that is important for me, in my opinion, or the only game plan that is important for you, in my opinion, is that you are filling your head with the right stuff, you know? Um, Cause it's really interesting that humans, you know, if you just get the right information in a human's head, they'll naturally begin to implement. If they agree with the stuff and they like it, it will happen. It will manifest, like it will happen, you know? Yeah. Um, and so like, you know, like if you have the right stuff in your head, it will work, you know? And so my, the only real action step that I like to give students is continually be studying this stuff um, and get always be learning, things always be learning and all, get kind of addicted to that feeling of like learning something new and something that could really, really help this. 
you know. Okay. Um, so would you say like pretty much start reading books about selling and about yeah, man, and and things like man. that. And use me as a resource too. I've got a lot of really good books, and you know, I've got the course obviously, and all these things out there. Um, and so you know, there's there's a lot of great ways that you can start. Um, and so, yeah. Besides that, um, another action plan that a direct action plan is get a contractor, leverage their results, and start posting into Facebook groups. You know, okay. Start seeing if you can get some inbound. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I remember last time we were talking about some other type of books, but if you have any books on like selling and things like that, then yeah, you know, I would, of course, we'd love to For know sure. about them and then, you know, get them and then when they get For a chance sure. to read them. Well, I think, um, you know, selling is, I, it's interesting. I, I think most books that I've read on selling, they talk about like little hacks, but the the easiest thing, the easiest way to sell anything is to believe in it and care about it and know that it works. And then on, and then just have an honest conversation at that point, you know, like about it. And then, yeah, like if you know what you do works, then at which point all selling is, is just talking about it, <laughs> like yeah. you know, asking them questions, letting them do the talking and then providing solutions. So, you know, like, um, it's really people overcomplicate it. Really. They really severely overcomplicate it. And I think there is, there's definitely some merit to being structured with your sales process. I get that. Um, but I mean, gosh, if you, if you know what you're selling works, that's the most important thing that takes you 80% of the way, you know, um, you're going to have to focus a lot on script, a lot on, you know, like hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> I think my speaker just connected to somebody's phone. That's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, like you've noticed it too. Like it was interesting about this, like uh, these politicians in a, as an example, you know, like there are certain politicians where they have like a big stack of notes and then there's politicians that don't have a stack of notes because what they're saying is, is internalized, you know, like in, in a way to know who's telling the truth is who has the biggest stack of paper that they have to refer to in regards to what to say next, you know? Yeah. You know, and so like, if you just believe in what you're selling and, and, you, and you know it works and you've proven it to yourself, at which point it's all about diagnosing their problem, hearing them out, letting them do the talking and then showing the solution that you've created, you know? Okay. Yeah, okay. and then you know, as well, getting them over that trust top, getting them to trust you, you know? Okay. But I will recommend some selling books, for sure. I'll send you. Have I sent you my Amazon student reading list? Oh yeah, yeah. That's there's some really good. There's some really good stuff in there. Yeah, just be sure to be sure to go through that. That's, you know, I really I really created a very I intentionally created a really really good little structure there. Um, there's some killer books in there, mm -hmm. and most of them are on mindset. Most of them are on worldview mindset, you know, personal accountability stuff like that because really i mean that's all it is you know all of this is just how you view yourself um but that being said like you know it is also good to have some technical yeah <laughs> all right well can't really think of much questions anymore at the moment but <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, I love, I love, I love knowing that I can plow through somebody's agenda before the calls over. It's always really, it's always really satisfying for me. No, yeah, yeah. You give me like a better, just more direction on how to approach all this. So. Sweet, good too. That's good stuff, man. Yeah, and uh, just keep me posted, man. Um, I don't have much I need to go over on this call either. I think you know you've got the model, you've got what you need to do. Um, and, you know, our calls primarily would just be answering technical questions like what we've done today and accountability, you know, and keeping you moving forward. Yeah. Um, oh, so, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what I want to do. Good stuff, man. All right, you good to end here? Yeah, I'm good. Honestly, I'm good. 
All right, sweet. Yeah. Hey, it's been a great call. Thanks, Trey. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon, brother. See you. Yeah.